Very well. Yep. Uh, they performed well. You know, I, I think they're not used to the structure of a Milwaukee. You know, Milwaukee's a very methodical, uh, well-oiled machine. You know, a lot of veterans, you'll find very few rookies on their team. They're very seasoned. You know, and, it, and it's it's a tough adjustment. You know, it's a little bit. It's a, obviously, the game is 100 times faster than practice, and so it does take some getting used to. I think after the first half, they, they kind of got their legs under them. But, you know, it's part of the learning process. And when you look at Chicago, a team that, that's bested you throughout this season, you know, the first season that you played against them, this will be your fourth game. They've won the last three. Going into this game, what what is it about Chicago that you've had the most trouble with that you've tried to perfect moving forward? You know, it's funny because uh, they shut us out. You know, one of the few games I've ever seen a shutout in indoor. But at the same token, I think we had something 60, high 60s in, uh, shots on goal. So, you know, they're a very good team. Uh, they had, they do have a lot of seasoned veterans that have, you know, resided in the Chicago area and now playing for them. Um, you know, we just, we got to play our game. I think we went into Chicago thinking we were going to walk all over them, and the exact opposite happened. So, you know, as long as the guys stay focused, stay tuned into the game, I think tomorrow night will be a good, good victory for us. What is your game? How do you define that for the Knights? Who are the Knights? Uh, the Knights are very fast-paced, very aggressive, um, and physical style. It's a lot of running gun, kind of a West Coast offense if you want to relate it to football. Um, you know, we don't sit, we don't really set up shop in the offensive end and, and pass the ball. And, you know, it's a lot of running gun. And hopefully we, we can catch guys off uh, other teams, you know, sleeping. And we can capitalize with some 3v2s and 2v1s. Being in this position where, you know, you, you win the next two games and you have a good chance of, of getting yourselves into the playoffs, having the opportunities early on in the season that didn't fall your way, just go into this situation that you're currently in and, and what that means to you as a leader on the team. Yeah, it's definitely frustrating. I mean, the the – the season goes by in the blink of an eye, you know, and then games that we look back now and there's, you know, easily half a dozen or more games that we should have, if not could have won, and we let slip through our fingers. So it's, you know, there's definitely some regret and, and some disappointment that we didn't capitalize early in the season, but the fact that we still have a chance and still have an opportunity to make the playoffs, you know, we're very fortunate, very lucky, but hopefully we can capitalize. What do you think about the psyche of the team? Is there a positive-minded team moving forward, or is this a team that you kind of have to build up and get feeling right about moving forward in the season? Yeah, I think the psyche of the team is very good. Uh, you know, no one likes to lose, and we were on a stretch where we went 1-9 in nine and 10 games, and so, you know, it's kind of a downhill slope where the snowball gets bigger and bigger and guys get frustrated, but at the same token, uh, everybody gets along with each other, and so there, there is a good psyche around the team. Everyone, you know, they, they pull together, um, but, you know, it, win, winning does, does cure all uh, – <laughs> All wounds, for sure. Brian O'Quinn voted MVP of the team, had a game where he struggled against Milwaukee. Just go into you know his play because he comes in for Eric Reed on an injury last season, but this season it's been all him. Yeah, it's definitely been all him. Uh, he's done a great job. You know, He, he definitely surri- surprised some people around the league. Um, we all knew that he was a great keeper. Uh, we saw it towards the end of last season when Eric did get hurt. Um, but he's done a tremendous job in, in helping us in the back and you know saving our butts more than once. Um, and hopefully, you know, he'll be healthy enough to come back next season as well. And the last thing I want to ask you is, is looking at Tommy Tanner and his leadership on the team. What has he done for the team this season? Because, I mean, you've, you've been with him since the beginning here at Syracuse. But looking forward and looking at this season as a whole with all the changes that have gone on, what type of leader has he been? Tremendous. Uh, you know, his knowledge uh, of the game is second to none. You know, he, he's won several championships at, at the Cleveland Crunch. Um, and, and just his his attitude towards the team. He never gets frustrated, never gets down on the guys. He's always, you know, the one supporting everybody and positive. You know, there's, there's guys that will definitely get angry and get frustrated and, you know, maybe get in, into a little bit of an altercation with each other, and he's right there supporting everybody. I mean, he, he's definitely a, a player's coach and someone you definitely want to be around when you're on the team. Appreciate it. Thank you.